Well, welcome back to the iconic Marine Stadium here in Miami at the Coconut Grove Seafood Festival. Pachi from the Celebration Sea Foundation. We are thrilled to be here. And it is a beautiful day here in Miami, right, ladies? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, we're at the Eco Discovery Zone with Celebration Sea Foundation. And we are all here actually supporting this amazing cause, which is tied into some really special people in the Keys that you guys probably know a lot of people affected by this, right? So with Hurricane Irma, we have this uh, really extraordinary push with all the mayors and all the chambers and rotaries, organizations coming together to help the amazing families. 11,000 people lost their families with this hurricane. But they're not looking for a handout. They're looking for a hand up. And diving is part of that, right? So yes, it the, is. The diving capital of the world. So how about this cool organization, Ken Niedemeyer, who's not here today, but these are like the Ken Angels, right? Yeah. You guys are here representing our dear friend. So Ken Niedemeyer, for those of you guys who don't know, he's a legend in coral, it's restoration work and his vision. So would you lovely ladies just introduce yourselves, explain what your organization is doing and Ken's vision and what we're looking at with this beautiful little tree. Sure, so my name is Amelia. Um, I'm one of our senior interns with the Coral Restoration Foundation. This is Natalia. She's one of our newest interns, so we've got a little bit of Both everything. female divers, yes. right? Go we've divers, yes. a lot of yes. females at our organization. Scuba divers, <laughs> yes, okay. Yes. Um, so this is, as he said, kind of Ken's baby of an organization. He had a live rock farm down in the Florida Keys, and it was kind of by accident that this was even started. Wh he when was that, by the way? How long ago? 2003 that he officially kind of yeah, started yeah. doing Many his years. own thing. In 2007 is when we became an organization. So he was kind of figuring it out. He's really a pioneer of new techniques, new ideas of how to grow coral, what works best for all the different species of coral. Um, so what he's been doing down there and what now all of us have been doing is essentially we have a coral farm. Uh, we have seven of them up and down the Florida Keys. Our largest one is right off of the coast of Tavernier and it's Full of these weird looking skeleton Now this weird things. thing is part of a coral farm, yes, right? So what is. is this thing that we're looking at that's so cool? It's huh? a funky looking handmade yeah. contraption okay. that is actually super effective for growing coral. Yep. Um, you can fit up to 60 coral, or up to 100 corals on a specific Which tree. this is a coral. These are right? real coral, um, okay. obviously not alive. But so we're, we're from the top to the bottom. So we're looking at PVC pipe. So it's this PVC goes at the pipe bottom the of the ocean, right? Fiberglass on Usually the how deep, by the way? They are anchored at 30 feet, but they hover between 20, 25. Oh, so they're intended to be in the, in the yep. water column somewhere. They're right? intended to be able to move So they're the somehow waves. buoyed or elevated yep. off the floor. Okay. They're hung up with floats on the top. And, and the whole idea the, is that the they The balance, can, move. can you just show everybody watching what they're looking at here? So that's a, a piece of coral, right? Yep. And then wh what is this? So from the PVC, you have these little arms like a Christmas tree, right? Yeah, that's the idea. And that's actually living coral, yes. right? Yes. Okay, so the concept is you put these in the ocean, and then what happens to little pieces of coral here? Well, you just come back in a little while. It usually takes six to nine months until it's an outplantable size, which might be something like these bottom ones. And when they're ready, we just snip, snip, cut them off, and we take them on our boats, and they get right back on the reef. What is this, staghorn? This is staghorn, and stag I've got coral, right? elk horn here as well. An elk horn coral. Which we have on yeah. trees as well. And they, they actually look like, if you look at the horns yeah. of an animal, that's how they get their amazing names. They do. So these are all up and down the keys. The attention is you, you actually start with a little bud, mm -hmm. and then it grows, grows, grows. And then what happens when it's mature? What do you do with it when it grows? So we either take it off, or if it's actually a really, really huge piece, all you have to do is keep taking branches of it, and you've got that healthy base there for the next time. And all you have to do is keep it submerged in water, keep it in buckets on our boat, go 10 minutes to Pickles Reef, and splash in the water you go. And we've got a pretty funky outplanting technique where it seems kind of counterintuitive to take like literal hammers to the reef and start hammering away. But the idea is that you're clearing all of that algae away till you get to that you know substrate that is old coral and you can glue it back down with an underwater marine epoxy. How cool is that? Yeah, it's funky. So I understand that one of my heroes and mentors shot some video. Let's see if we can see this here. So if this shows up, um, this is a video that was shot by Fraser Nivens, right? Mm -hmm. Right, can you play it again one more time? Yeah. So this is uh, literally my mentor in life for 40 years. <laughs> uh, Discovery Channel and Shark Week. If you guys have seen his stuff everywhere. So Frazier shot this beautiful video. Do you want to explain to everybody what Frazier was shooting for you guys with Ken? Yeah, he's awesome. I mean, Go obviously Frey he's Frey. beautiful. Yeah. 
Um, so this is actually a huge field of Elkhorn. This is what we want to see back in the reef, on the reefs down in the Florida Keys. Um, that's our nursery, you can see. So that right there, the dark spot? That's all the live rock and all around it. That's are, one of Fraser's drones, right? That's He's where flying it all the started. drone. Yep. Droney Maroney. Okay, yeah. So these are our, what it looks wow. like when it's a full staghorn tree. So picture this, but so actually that, with big but stuff. Full, right? Yep. 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 Wow. And obviously, you know, it's a huge biodiverse area. We have tons yep. of fish. We have a resident sea turtle. We've got tons of live stuff that comes to cool visit us. How cool is that? How many of you kids out there want to be a diver when you grow up because of these cool girls, right? Huh? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So you guys are down there actually doing that every day, right? Yeah, whenever we can. Yep. And so that from... Uh, so this is the actual outplanting technique. You can kind of see it looks painful, but it's not. So they'll harvest the coral. Mm-hmm. They actually will incorporate it into a tree. So that piece of coral will then grow, and then they can repurpose it, make more of it, or actually then put it back on the reef to, to grow it. The great part about our technique is we don't have to go and keep collecting coral from the reef. We don't have to hurt any live coral to keep doing what we're doing. We just keep breaking it off. How cool is that? Yeah. So if somebody wanted to know more about how they could help you guys out, is there a place, do you want volunteers, or how do people help? Because this is like super important, the corals. You go? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're always looking for volunteers. I started as a volunteer over the summer, and I loved it enough that I came back as an intern. But what um, does that mean? You get to go diving all the time? You get to go yes. to the Keys and dive, right? Yes. Pretty cool volunteer job, right? Yeah, so exactly. what do they do if they want to help, or how do they find you guys? Uh, we have business cards over at our table, which is... <laughs> yep. Right um, over Off here camera to the, left to the right. Guys where but if sitting. they're online, because we're on Facebook Live, how do they find you guys online? Online at coralrestoration.org. Um, and yeah, we have a great staff that's always looking for both land based and water based volunteers. Um, and honestly, the best thing that anybody could do for us is spread the word about conservation efforts in general, especially in the Florida Keys in light of Hurricane Irma. So in terms of reference, how important are coral reefs worldwide? And can you tell people about the challenges? Because it's a pretty big one. Yeah. I've been talking about it yeah, for almost tough. over 40 years, trying to get people to understand the importance of corals. You guys are the experts. So for people to understand the importance that coral plays in the world, can you just share that with people? And what's happening, by the way, in terms of coral bleaching and temperature? Sure. Uh, so a really mind-blowing statistic is that even though coral reefs take up less than 1% of the space in the ocean, they hold up to 25% of all fish species, which is a crazy amount. And unfortunately, in light of climate change and recent uh, climate events, the reefs have been in decline for quite some time. So our mission is just to get the reefs rebuilt so that we can bring back fish species that we've lost in the Keys. And because that's habitat them. for the fish. That's yeah. where they live. So without the coral, they can't live. Yes. So t can you explain to people, because it's a little complicated, <laughs> coral bleaching or the challenges with coral in general so that people can really understand wh what is happening out there and what role do we all play in that and how can we help? So corals exist within a very narrow range of environmental Actually, conditions. Actually, what is a coral? So let's go right. back to what's in your hand. What is a coral? Right. Sure. Because this is super so, cool. So underwater, this is what a live, healthy coral would look like, full of color, uh, branching, obviously, like this. But that's a lot of critters, right? Yes. It's a so, lot of living things in one little space. We usually like to ask people whether they think corals are animals, plants, or rocks. And honestly, we get a lot of mixed responses. So corals are animals. Uh, I don't know if you can see here, but there are tiny holes within this structure. Uh, each one holds a coral polyp. So if you think of a jellyfish with little tentacles sticking out, each one of these holes will have Tentacles and that would be out. on that animal like that big, Very right? Small. But it would actually have these little tentacles reaching out and feeding and pulling feeding nutrition. Feeding within the water column. Yep. Yeah. Um, and they have, so what bleaching is, is that corals have a symbiotic relationship with um, a protist called Zuzanthellae. Hard name to remember. Um, but that's what gives coral their color. You guys so, actually know your Latin names? <laughs> Minimus, Maximus, whatever all that stuff is in Latin? <laughs> But, but the bottom line is we have cool, two cool female role models for other girls because one of the things we really need is more females in science. A big push right now, especially minorities and females, there's millions of jobs out there that are available. 
and a lot of kids don't understand the career paths to be like you guys. So one of the things we're so grateful is you guys spent the weekend today, actually they all volunteered, to be able to answer questions. And if little girls look up to you like super cool girls and say, I want to be like that girl on the coral reef and helping those corals, that's what's really important that they can see you guys out there. So what was the, the game changer for you guys in terms of were you in school and you saw something on TV or how did you even find Ken to be inspired to be involved with coral? Sure, so I went to school um, in California actually, not a whole lot of coral reef ecology out there. Because there's um, kelp beds out there, Yeah, a lot of kelp. it was beautiful yeah, and like very jungles, cold. Yeah, like underwater jungles. And it was I not for me. Dove that many times, yeah. Um, so I uh, got to do a course where I actually got certified in Palau, so that was really oh, cool. Oh, wait, 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 excuse so, me, <laughs> okay, Palau, all right. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to start with that and yeah. decide, you. oh, I don't, this isn't for me, you don't, that doesn't happen. Try beaver tail uh, in, so, in Rhode Island and like two foot visibility. I remember my first dive, she's in Palau. Right. Keep going, okay, yeah, total so respect. Yeah, I've, I've you got seen it right. the other world <laughs> and I don't like it. it. So yeah. I um, knew that I wanted to pursue something tropical, something in marine ecology and that's kind of how I ended up, and I knew I wanted to go to Florida, and I found the Coral Restoration Foundation, and I just thought it was the coolest thing that we were actually, I mean, this is the largest restoration project in the world, um, definitely in the Florida Keys, and it's just amazing to be a part of something like that, and every day that I go to work, I feel like I'm actually making a difference. And that's work, it's a and job. that's what I wanted, right? yeah, and I get paid to how do cool it, it's is great. That, right? so. so with Thaddeus, God bless Thaddeus, and Maui, all these other people, like especially the inner city kids don't understand the career paths here, so especially for females, and we got two of them up here, these girls are both doing this cool job, right, that a lot of girls had no idea they could go out there and be like super cool chicks underwater, scuba diving, blowing bubbles, saving yeah. coral, right? Yeah, it's awesome. And you don't have to be some, like, old buff dude. Like, I can carry my own tanks. Yeah. I can do all of that. It's awesome. So, so how did it start for you, when this, the career path about getting a job, doing all this cool stuff? So I grew up in the Northeast. Not that much. Whereabouts? Uh, northern New Jersey. Oh, Jersey. Okay. <laughs> Connecticut boy. Yeah. Right. Our water's a lot different than they know down yeah, here, right? So not that much experience with tropical waters um, then, but I had grandparents up in Sarasota uh, yeah. who I would visit very often. And I remember going as a little kid to the Moat Marine Aquarium. And oh, Mo so Moat Marine, yeah, like super famous and yeah. like a great brand. Very big deal. Like Woods Marine Hole and Harbor Branch. There's a couple of these super special places. So Moat. You went there and were yeah, inspired? And, and I fell in love with everything having to do with the ocean. I, I'm still living my childhood dream today. So was that a tour? Someone just took you in? It's, you saw the yeah, submarines, just, the robots, the critters, and said, I want to do that. They, having a, a, they just opened the exhibit, which they still have, actually, yeah. um, where they brought up um, a giant squid <laughs> that they have preserved there. And I... I was obsessed. Yeah. I thought it was the coolest Google thing. Google a I giant ever squid. Seen. If you haven't seen so a giant cool. squid like laid out after they pull out of a belly of a sperm whale or something, yeah. it's like how many, how many feet with the tentacles? It's got to be about 20 feet long. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, huge. A, it's, a, it's a big piece of like something, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, anyhow, the, these guys, if you think about every day, you're out there doing stuff. Ken Niedermeyer, hats off to him. Fraser Nivens, who again donated his time the minute we needed help, brought the cameras down to shoot today. So we are at the Coconut Grove Seafood Festival with two super cool role models for high, it's all girl power down there, hitting, it really saving is. the coral <laughs> reefs, right? So high five, ladies. Thank you guys so much for coming. And you Thank guys you will so be much. here all weekend answering questions, right? We will. Right? Come visit Thank us. Thank you guys so much. So Coconut Grove Seafood Festival, and anybody wants to help, keystrong.org, go Elmira, flap Woo. those angel wings. We'll be here going live from Facebook all weekend. Thank you guys. Rock on. All right. Thank you. Stay tuned.